Art history has shown us time and time again, on top of being some of the most skillful and dedicated artists on the planet, actors have a funny old habit of being a rather demanding bunch, which can make day-to-day -day life on a TV set uh, interesting, let's say. Now, this need to obtain a certain set of circumstances isn't always a bad thing, of course, with most performers simply trying their best to add something extra to an overall production through their seemingly unorthodox requests. But that still doesn't change the fact that a great many of the following requirements range from curious to straight-up bizarre when put under the microscope. Gareth here from WhatCulture.com, and here are 10 and unusual demands made by actors on recent TV shows. Number 10. Jason Bateman didn't need a double, Ozark. Simply put, getting booted around a television set for takes at a time can sometimes lead to injuries that can put an entire project on hold should an actor get seriously hurt, hence why stunt performers are a thing. Yet that still could not stop Jason Bateman from insisting on getting his hands dirty during the fourth and final season of Netflix's Ozark during the mid-season finale by the name of Sanctified. With the episode in question depicting Alfonso Herrero's Javier Elizondo beating the stuffing out of Bateman's Marty Bird, the former went on record to state how generous the latter was during the shooting of their skirmish. As Herrera would reveal on the post-credit podcast, what I really admired from Jason was he was there, and he was physically there, and sometimes there was a double, and he said, no, 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 I'm gonna do it myself, it has to be that way. With this need to be very much in the firing line, it's safe to say Bateman achieved his goal of making the scene and series the best we can be. Number 9. Lily James refused to break character for four months, Pam and Tommy. Lily James very much knew she needed to bring her A-game from the second she was officially announced to be playing none other than Baywatch and Playboy icon Pamela Anderson in a biopic series centered on her life and relationship with Tommy Lee around the time the pair's infamous sex tape made its way into the public eye. And with James ultimately becoming aware of the real-life figure's lack of desire to have any association with the project late on, the actor would also note how she focused her incredibly disappointed feelings on the matter into a sense of responsibility to do absolutely everything I could to try and do her justice. In the end, on top of requesting to have her dialect coach on set throughout shooting, James James would insist on never breaking away from Anderson's specific American vocal quality and accent, spending four months in Pam's vocal space, except when she had a drink or two and wound up reverting back to her British twang, of course. Number 8. Bob Odenkirk Just Wants Jimmy To Grow Better Call Saul Despite still doing his utmost to play his cards appropriately close to his chest, in the lead-up to the highly anticipated conclusion to Breaking Bad prequel epic Better Call Saul, Bob Odenkirk was all too happy to reveal the one specific request he put forward to the show's freakishly talented creator Vince Gilligan when it came to the direction he wanted good old Jimmy McGill to head down over the course of the show. In short, all Odenkirk ever wanted was for the eventual Saul Goodman to experience some growth in the time he spent on Netflix screens for six prequel seasons. And when stating that he campaigned for this over the years, the Nobody star would also admit at Paley Fest, my argument to Vince Gilligan was that sometimes people do learn the right lessons from trauma and challenges in life. They don't always become Walter White. It remains to be seen whether Odin Kirk will get his unexpected wish. But as the star who survived a traumatic heart attack while shooting for the show's final season last July would also cheekily note at the event, the last hurrah for Gubbin and the gang is still guaranteed to be heart-stopping. <laughs> See what you did there. Number 7. Jensen Ackles refused to shoot a scene that went too far. The boys. You'd be forgiven for assuming that each of the talented folks found bringing the batch of anti-heroes to life in The Boys had very few limits when it came to what they were happy to apply their names and likenesses to. However, as revealed by the actor behind America's first superhero himself, Soldier Boy, Jensen Ackles actually drew the line when it came to one particular scene he was tasked with potentially shooting for season 3. After discussing the scene in question with the show's producer, Eric Kripke, though he wouldn't specify what it exactly consisted of, Ackles would admit to Entertainment Weekly, as a father of three and a son and a husband and a self-respecting human being, I can't do this. I didn't know where my line was, but but you found it. Hilariously, when discussing this unusual bump in the road, Kripke would add that the two were able to reach a compromise in the end, saying I got what I needed without him destroying his soul. How nice of him. Number 6. Hugh McGregor insisted on being there for Hayden Christensen's return, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Ewan McGregor wasn't the only Star Wars icon making his long-awaited return to the Skywalker saga with this year's Disney Plus Obi-Wan Kenobi series. And sensing just how big of a deal it was to finally be reunited with a close friend and star who had dealt with his fair share of sometimes negative feedback for his part in the divisive prequel trilogy, McGregor insisted on lending some moral support to the re-emerging Anakin Skywalker slash Darth Vader actor during his first shot back. As Hayden Christensen himself would note to Cinema Blend when discussing his first day back on location while shooting his part three appearance as Anakin in Obi-Wan's vision. Yeah, Ewan was there, but he was actually wrapped for the day. They had finished his coverage, and it was just so sweet what he did. He insisted on staying to be a part of my first shot back. Yep, it was just a very special day. Instead of opting for an early finish and a cold one in his trailer, McGregor clearly felt it was his duty to do everything in his power to make his returning pal feel as welcome and comfortable as possible during his no doubt emotional comeback. What a Jedi gent. Number 5. Oscar Isaac needed some quality time with Steven, Moon Knight. 
You can probably imagine how anxious the idea of bringing multiple different characters to the table over the course of Disney Plus's Moon Knight must have made leading man Oscar Isaac coming into the MCU show. So in an attempt to get over the sheer size of the task he was faced with in playing Stephen Grant, Mark Spector, and Jake Lockley, over the course of the inevitably complicated shoot, Isaac had a specific request during the production's first week. As the X-Men and Star Wars star were confessed to Digital Spy, because I wasn't totally comfortable yet with switching between the two, I asked if we could start with Stephen, and could we just film for a couple of scenes with Stephen first? Or at least one week we'll do all Stephen and then come in the next week and do Mark. Eventually, thanks to being allowed this space to focus on forming these personalities separately, Isaac eventually found a way to juggle between his many different characters, sometimes in one take, without it feeling like a party trick. Number 4. Timura Morrison Wanted Less Lines The Book of Boba Fett Timura Morrison isn't just any old performer, and clearly sensed that in his part as the iconic Boba Fett during his latest Disney Plus solo outing, he was faced with forging another compelling chapter in the often silent and stoic bounty hunter's legendary book. So when it became clear that Morrison was likely going to have to let loose a touch more dialogue than fans had grown used to hearing tumble out of the best gar equipped son of Django in said Star Wars show, the New Zealand performer attempted to push back against the likes of Jon Favreau and the gang. In Morrison's words when talking to NME about his latest stint as Boba, the actor stated that Fett simply talked far too much on the show, and even tried to pass off some of his lines to co-star Ming-Na Wen in an effort to remain mysterious. Going further, he'd even recount a tale of telling one of the show's writers, Noah Claw, that he wouldn't be saying a certain overstuffed section of the script, only to be told by an absent Favreau via phone call that he was still very much required to speak the words put down on the paper. Well, he tried. Number 3. Sydney Sweeney Didn't Feel Comfortable Shooting Some Nude Scenes Euphoria on top of making their headlines due to a largely positive critical reception, the latest season of Euphoria also found its routine depicting of many of its characters in the nude being called into question by some. It turns out that some of the stars involved in the show themselves were also not afraid to question the need to bear it all for a particular scene, with the likes of Minka Kelly and Sidney Sweeney both requesting to keep their clothes on when the original plan was to have them appear completely naked. In both cases, however, show creator Sam Levinson was said to have completely accommodated his actors on set, and in clarifying her specific comments on the matter when talking to Teen Vogue, Sweeney would later go on record to note that that while she didn't ask for the show to outright cut her nude scenes, Levinson went out of his way to ensure his actors were comfortable and that he would never make me do something I didn't feel comfortable with. Number 2. John Cena and James Gunn's No Asshole Casting Policy – Peacemaker to ensure as joyful and welcoming a workplace as humanly possible when producing one of the most superhuman small-screen tales of modern times, show creator James Gunn and leading man slash producer John Cena decided that enforcing a strict no assholes policy was the only way to go. Cena would reveal as such when discussing the late arrival of Freddie Stromer as Vigilante, replacing Chris Conrad in the role who was on different pages about certain things according to Gunn himself. But as Cena would note, James will say himself that we've got that no assholes policy, and that vetting process really helps when you start getting boots on the ground, because everybody on the team just wants to make a good show. Freddy was just no different, he came in and absolutely slayed. You have to admire the balls on anyone who would openly opt to be an asshole in the presence of the monster of a man that is the former WWE superstar, though. Number 1. Vecna Needed His Own Personal Upside Down – Stranger Things it likely won't come as too much of a surprise to hear that Stranger Things Season 4's big bad Vecna himself, Jamie Campbell Bauer, put himself through the ringer to bring the body-breaking entity into being. Along with cutting himself off from the rest of the outside world for four days in the lead-up to shooting any of his scenes as the heavily prosthetic boasting Vecna, the actor has confessed to doing some pretty wild stuff, and walking around the streets of Atlanta at 2am talking to himself in character. Upon being fully crafted into the unsettling one-time one, the star would admit to requesting 30 minutes of time to himself in between takes too, explaining it was totally pitch black. I'd sit in a dark room between the takes and go for it. It was really interesting. About halfway through, I started to become quite afraid of Vecna. Well, he wasn't the only one, was he? And that's our list. Know of any other unusual demands made by actors on recent TV shows? Let us know all about them in the comment section right down below, and do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're at it. Also, if you like this kind of thing, then head on over to whatculture.com and find some more awesome videos just like the one this video you're watching right this second is based on. I have been Gareth from whatculture.com. Thank you, as always, for clicking on this video today. I hope you have the best day possible, but in the meantime, be good to yourself, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.